Regarding GLIA, the potential of effects with uh, not only uh, meth but alcohol and uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, how, did, how did you find that out? <laughs> well, it, it was really a, not just myself, it was a collaboration um, okay. with, an, with investigators initially with the University of Colorado with Dr. Okay. Linda Watkins, who was a groundbreaker for the role of activated glia in chronic pain. Um, we then, in recognizing some of the parallels between chronic pains and opioids, and we looked at modulation there, it led us, along with the field, other investigators and researchers publishing that there may be some um, combination of glial activation and drugs of abuse, then it became sort of logical to start to explore some of these areas. And so we initially started with opioids, and then um, with some of the, the, both the human data that came out with um, showing the activation of glia in human methamphetamine abusers, that then helped propel us with NIDA's interest, the National Institutes of Drug Abuse, are very concerned about methamphetamine and the lack of pharmacotherapies for that. And so that helped propel us into the methamphetamine area. Also in parallel, then people were starting to look at alcohol. So it was a combination of our own insights and um, investigations and just the field moving along and the needs of NIDA in part. Okay. Now what about multiple sclerosis? What uh, mechanism? So the multiple yeah. sclerosis is an interesting story because the initial Medicine Nova San Diego, a lot of the pain and drug addiction work started out with the Avigen company up in Alameda that merged with Medicine Nova at the end of 2009 to, to bring the programs together. But back in around 2006, Medicine Nova had in license the utility for multiple sclerosis from one of the Japanese um, invent, inventor companies, pharma companies. And, um, and that was really based on simple neuro anti-inflammatory activity. And so the, the premise was that it would actually be useful in the, the you know, early inflammatory phases of MS. What we found, or what before I became part of, of the company, what my colleagues found in RRMS was that it had only a weak effect on the neuroinflammation but it per had an effect on protecting neuronal function. So whole brain atrophy, the shrinking and, 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 and essentially neurodegeneration was significantly attenuated by ideal last. 